Hey you guys, this is Raphael from ShallowRelics.com. I hope you're all doing well. Hope you're having a good day. Hope you're staying healthy uh, here in Tennessee. It's a little soggy today, so I thought I would try to get a few of these ahead of the game. So we're gonna do a few. And a couple of things that we're gonna talk about over the next couple of days are ones that have always been personal favorites of mine. Last week, I bought a really great collection of Confederate belt buckles, Confederate buttons, and he also had several really cool union buttons. We're gonna talk about those too. I hadn't done a lot of buttons because as you can see, buttons and buckles, they're small and they don't show up as well. So I'm gonna rely more on blowing up things like this so you can see it. Cause when you look at what's laying on this table, doesn't look that impressive, but when you know the story and the history behind it, it's really cool. This is a, a cast buckle with CSA on the front, Confederate States of America. At the outbreak of the war, they tried several different versions of Confederate buckles. That's why collectors have loved them for so long. There's so many varieties, so many different styles. This one was made, we believe, by one of the cool firms that actually helped the Confederacy make it a four-year war when it probably should have only been a couple-year war with the resources that they had. There was a company in Rome, Georgia. If you ever get a chance, Rome, Georgia is one of the most beautiful places I've ever seen in my life. It's off the beaten path a little bit, but if you get a chance, go down there because it's beautiful. People are very friendly. It's a great place to pass through. Tell them I said, hey. There was a man that lived there. He was an Englishman. And in 1855, he goes down there and he, along with his sons, start a company called Noble Brothers and Company. He was an English mining engineer and mineralogist. So he started a foundry down there. They made steam engines and boilers. They serviced railroads and steamboats. So they were already in manufacture for six years when the war broke out. 61 when the South decides they're gonna secede because there was no law against secession. That's why at the end of the war, they couldn't uh, prosecute Jefferson Davis and the South because there was no law against secession. It, they never thought about it when they were setting things up. So it wasn't against the law. The South did nothing against leaving the US. There was nothing against that in the Constitution, everybody values the Constitution. There was nothing in the Constitution about not being able to secede, but I digress. He realizes it's gonna be big business. So he goes to Montgomery, James Noble, the Englishman that I was talking about, goes to Montgomery and he says, Davis, I'm set up, I can help. He gets a contract to make cannon and they're making uh, the early guns or ordnance rifles. They make those guns. Uh, they make quite a few of them, actually, but they also are believed to have produced other things. And one of the most distinct pieces that they made was this buckle. It's made of pewter, and the pewter is simply tin, and it's mixed with copper and usually lead. And it gives it a white tone, uh, a gray tone when it's polished. You'll see these non-excavated and they'll have a pretty kind of dull gray tone. When they're excavated though, they have that pretty white color like this one. And they're very distinct because most of the buckles were made of brass, which made a lot more sense because that pewter is a lot more fragile. Didn't take a lot to break it. So 95% of the time when you see one of these, it's broken or ugly or, and had to be restored. This one has had nothing done to it. It's as pretty as you could hope for. It was found uh, down in a Confederate camp in Mississippi. It's got the CSA letters on it and they are still good and clear. A lot of times, like I said, they break and they break because when you're trying to hook the buckle onto the uh, leather belt, all they used for a, a hook is thin wire, thin iron wire like this. And as you can imagine, that's not easy to get on. So if you torque that a little bit, it's gonna break. Most of the time they're broken. Most of the time they're missing things. This one has all three of the original hooks. It has a, a beautiful face to it, has that pretty white color. 
And you can tell them easily because the brass ones will have the patina that's green or uh, chocolate brown or sometimes even a blackish color. The pewter's a completely different critter. You can have a dozen of the others and this one's going to stand out just because they're completely different. They realized that they didn't work that well and so they didn't make them forever. But it's believed that these were done by Noble Brothers. There's a couple of different versions that show up. There's the one with the CSA on it, and then there's a plain one that just has a plain, simple, unadorned face. Because this would have been harder because it was still made in a sand cast mold. They were pouring the pewter into that sand cast mold to produce these. You've got to be careful if it's a non-excavated one, because there's a cat up north, great guy, he stops by and asks me if he's... Uh, if how, he, how I'm doing when I see him at shows. And he asked me because at one time at Chicago, there was this guy walking around trying to sell this uh, pewter CSA buckle and he had gotten offered like 10 grand for it. The guy comes around, he says, I made that. And I'm like, no, you didn't. <laughs> and he come back up and he showed me he did. And you can tell him because on that outside face, the edge has a little bit of a bevel to it. The original ones did not. Uh, so if you see that bevel, be careful because they are superbly done. He only made, forget how he told me one time, maybe 20 or 30, or maybe 40, but he made them for him and his friends. And so they have leaked out and some of them are out there, but be careful on those because it is a good way to turn 10 grand into $50, which I do not recommend. Let the government do that for you and don't do it yourself. These are great little buckles. This one, as you can see, is beautiful. It came out of the collection of Joe Hale. Uh, Joe, great guy, friend of mine for 25, 30 years. He sat up as the Carolina Rebel at Civil War shows and, uh, uh, and made one of the most beautiful displays of uh, Confederate belts and buckles uh, you've ever seen. And this was one of those that helped him win best of shows. Uh, best Excavated Artifact, all those big awards he won, and this was part of the uh, collection that won it for him. Uh, he's doing well, a uh, great guy, uh, hope they're all well. Hi, Miss Paula, hi, Joe, love y'all. Uh, you can go on to Shiloh Relics, you can see this one, you can also see, uh, but there's gonna be a lot of cool Confederate buckles, cool Confederate buttons coming on. And you can go on there as of the time of this video, this one is available. You can own it, you can own others to put beside it. And I hope you know that I care about you. Hope I hope you know you're safe. Uh, I hope you know that I hope that you are safe. I hope things are going your way. Uh, I always want to encourage you to be the best person you can be. I know right now it's not the easiest time to be a good person. You have to work extra hard at it because it seems like a lot of people want you to be at your worst because they know they can get the best out of them if you're at your worst. So hang in there. Don't let them get you down. Keep fighting through it. Uh, it's going to be better. I don't know when. I don't know exactly how, but I really do believe it's going to be better. And I want you to know that I appreciate you. I hope you'll have a great day. I hope you hug the ones you love. Tell them you love them. Because if the last word you ever hear out of my mouth is I love you, I'm okay with that. I'll catch you later. Love you guys.